Hey everybody, <clears throat> I am here today, uh, the Blue Wizard of Detroit, <clears throat> to go over this Kickstarter that I got in. <clears throat> uh, this one I've been waiting for for a while. Um, I know my cam is a little bit um, sh more shaky than it normally is. Um, my setup got a little bit messed up, but I'll try to be doing my best. Uh, so thank you uh, for watching. Uh, if anyone here is interested in tarot or not, uh, this is a really cool one because this one uh, is a set dedicated to every card having a reference to literature, right? So literary tarot, obviously. Um, for those of you who only know me uh, for my MTG content, uh, I am also a professional tarot reader. Um, so if you're ever interested in any of that, you can hit me up. Um, so yeah, let's get started. Um, the first thing we're going to hit um, is the main tarot cards. Uh, this was the art book um, that I bought additional to this that has all of the art, full arts in here. We're going to go over this. Um, they had a, pa a booster pack of alternate popular cards that uh, the Kickstarter uh, voted on. And then this company also does the Friction Literary Anthology. Um, these are amazing quality. I love the art in these. They're absolutely fantastic. Talk a little bit about those later. But this is Friction um, company that did this. So we're going to start with the tarot itself. Now, um, the elephant in the room with this one is this Kickstarter took a lot of time to get to us because of COVID and the production issues. I backed a few other tarot um, uh, back, uh, Kickstarters at the same time as I did this one, and this one is the last to come in. Um, but they were very responsive with what they were doing. Uh, and every time there was a delay, they told us why and all that kind of thing. Um, so every time we got notified that there was a delay in production, it was always because they were trying to make this a better value for us, right? And at the time, I was thinking, you know, it doesn't have to be the best value possible. Like, you you know, it can, you know, you can go a little bit, substa a little bit substandard to what you're offering or what you want to offer to get it. But now having all of this in my hand, I am very happy that they waited. This right here, I haven't even opened it yet. You can still see the shrink wrap on it. I am going to treasure this for a very long time um, in and apart from everything else. Um, but this deck is very well constructed. It looks, uh, deck, this box, deck box, um, very well constructed, looks absolutely gorgeous. Um, the amount of filigree on this is impressive, uh, very impressive. Uh, so Brink uh, is the charity that they support, Stories for Change. Um, and that's what all of this went to, um, all the profits from this. Uh, so the box itself is absolutely gorgeous. Um, it's got the magnetic closure. It's got the... Um, little strap here that lifts it out um if it were me i might have done it this way to more mimic a book page but other than that all of this construction seems really nice um so definitely i would say an a uh for the deck box itself um so we're getting to the cards here and then the instruction booklet that comes with it also gilded this thing is gilded to hell um so we have the description of each of the cards. Uh, so the uh, suit of quills is based on meditations by Marcus Aurelius, uh, pairing done by Kelly Sue DeConnick, um, and tells you what it means and why uh, it was chosen. Um, so I will probably be consulting this uh, pretty heavily in this because honestly, I, while I'm pretty well read, uh, I am not well read in the classics. Um, and then while I do this, I'm also going to be um, sleeving them. So coming from Magic the Gathering, uh, I sleeve all of my cards because I'm kind of a klutz. And so this is something I do with my um, tarot cards as well. 
So, um, I also sell tarot supplies. So if you are ever interested uh, in tarot supplies, uh, like these uh, sleeves, or I'm getting custom tarot mats made with a local artist who's my friend. Uh, and so this, uh, if you're familiar with Magic the Gathering, will know that these mats uh, are used so you can press down a little bit to pick up the card without bending the card. Uh, so the use of them, the mats, uh, is to pick up cards without bending them. Uh, so they're a fantastic thing if you don't want to sleeve your cards. So these are fully f gilded. Um, absolutely gorgeous. Look at all of the uh, gild here. It's not just gold gild as you can see. It's golden and rainbow. Um, <laughs> this is definitely gone all out for this. Just got to try and break some of these things up to get to... Okay. So, we have the Fool here. Obviously, Don Quixote. Even, Don Quixote, even I can uh, tell that that's Don Quixote. So, we're going to see that. Very nice. We've got the Fool there. Um, it's interesting because Don uh, Quixote with the Fool... You could also see being the tower. That would be very apt for that, because we've got the tower there. So in this set, mixing Don Quixote uh, and adding the towers is interesting. Okay, so now these are much thicker than the normal car uh, tarot cards that we're used to. Um, and it looks like that based on this thickness sleeving them might be a little bit difficult. So I might have to do this off stream uh, as to not waste our time uh, on stream. Um, so first report, the thickness of these tarot cards is fantastic, right? So we've got a thick card. The art here is amazing. Um, and then we've got the magician here um, being the monkey king, which I absolutely love. Uh, that tale is fantastic. On Netflix, there is um, the Monkey King series um, in, from New Zealand. Absolutely amazing. Watch it. I'm hoping season three comes out here pretty soon. Uh, so that is fantastic depiction here. The art here is amazing. Uh, the High Priestess. This looks to me uh, like Greek mythology. So we've got the Fool of the Magician, uh, the High Priestess, King Lear. Okay, King Lear. Uh, we've got some great representation on the cards here. The Empress is the Wife of Bath's Tale by Chaucer. Uh, and the thing I like about these, uh, that is definitely, um, what's his name? Yeah, per Perot by Agatha Christie. So the thing I love about these tarot cards, depending on how you read tarot, the nice thing about these is if you have any cultural knowledge or actual knowledge from reading these, that will add layers to your reading, right? So, uh, for the Emperor here, we have um, authority, control, focus, structure, protection. Um, so, with the Emperor, you get the normal Emperor stuff, right? But then you can get the Pro stuff. Pro's a detective, right? Uh, one of Pro's strengths is uh, that he's unassuming. You know, he lets because of his demeanor and his accent, people underestimate him. So you get these layers to these cards, right? Um, and then here his uh, staff is um, an Ankh, which is also nice. These are super thick. Okay, uh, 40,000 leagues under the sea, right? Yep, Jules Verne, or 20,000 leagues, not 40. Look at that purple. That is a magnificent purple. Right, the lovers. Well, who do we have as the lovers here? Uh, Age of Innocence by Edith Wharton. Okay. So I'm gonna go pretty quickly through these because there's a lot. Um, and if I see anything that I uh, specifically like, we can stop and talk about it. Uh, any cards? So we're gonna go through the major arcana first. Uh, so we've got the lovers. This is the chariot. 
We've got strength here, obviously Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Sorry, just going, getting some uh, interference here. I just want to make sure all of my things are set up. Okay. Yeah, we're live here. There's an excellent connection. Ah, finally. My computer finally caught up to all this that's going on. All right. Um, strength, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. We have warnings of, you know, vanity, warnings of control and power. Uh, we've got all that. The Hermit, um, Frankenstein, I'm guessing. Uh, Frankenstein's monster on the card, but Frankenstein the book, right? Um, Wheel of Fortune. Look at that card. That is a beautiful card. I cannot wait to get these sleeved up. Uh, they are, as of right now, very stiff, very thick, and the gilding makes it a little hard. Uh, I'm sure with wear that this will go through. Um, but look at how gorgeous that is. Then we have Justice here, Count of Monte Cristo, obviously, right? The Hanged Man. Oh man, look at okay, look at this card. So we have here we've got the Hanged Man, but look at these reflections up here. These cards are so detailed. Let's look at what the Hanged Man is. Hermit, Wheel of Fortune. Justice, The Hanged Man, uh, The Love Song of J. Alfred Prufrock by T.S. Eliot. Not something I've thought of in a while, right? Since high school, but that is gorgeous. Dracula, Death. Much more menacing than the normal Death. Again, the layers added to this. With Mina Harker. Uh, temperance here. Ooh, that is a fantastic card. What do we have for Temperance? The Cold Equations by Tom Godwin. I don't know if I know this one. Uh, but that is amazing. Ah, Moby Dick, the Devil. That is, is so apt, isn't it? Moby Dick, the Devil being something of our own making, obsession. That is a perfect card. Uh, and we have some famous people because they tell us the pairings. So the devil the pairing is Talia Lavin. That's a great one, Talia. Ah, the tower. I can tell the tower just by this. What do we have here for the tower? The Outsider by H.P. Lovecraft. Ah, Lovecraft, you have a place in literary history, but it is stained and dishonored. Which in itself is its own thing, right? Okay. Star. Look at that beautiful star. Look at how beautiful that is. What do we have with the star? The star is Emily of the New Moon. Alice in Wonderland for the moon. I love that. That is perfect for the moon. Normally we have two wolves on a path. If we're talking about um, rider weight. Um, but we have Destiny here as a wolf. And Ka Chaos here with the Cheshire Cat. We have the Sun. The Sun that feels like Black Beauty. Yep, Black Beauty. Uh, haven't read that one. So I don't know how it adds to the lore of the card, but beautiful. Judgment. This has to be your Eurydice, Eurydice's, right? Oh, Dante's Inferno. Okay. Judgment, Dante's Inferno. Well, you can't get more spot on than that, right? <laughs> you literally can't get more spot on. You know, normally I find a lot of gilding to be too much, 
But the way they went about the gilding on all these cards adds highlight to things and doesn't distract from everything else. It's amazing. And we have the world here. Another beautiful card. Now this would oh look at that Peter Pan. Ace of Ink. Look look at the detail. Look at the quality of that. This was definitely worth the wait. Wow. Ace of Ink. Oh no, we've got jumble jungle book for the two of ink. It's amazing, right? Three of ink. Uh, let's go to ink, because I think ink is supposed to be water. Minor Arcana. Re our remake. Wands to ink. Okay, so we have wands to ink, cups to light, swords to quills, and pentacles to parchment. Which makes sense. So we have two Peter Pan Jungle Book. Three, a room with a view. For three, uh, again, haven't read that one. Ooh, look at that five. Four of ink, five is the Scarlet Pimpernel. Very, very evocative, very simple. Six of ink, the Iliad by Homer, fantastic. Seven of ink, oh, what do we have here? Oh, uh, six of ink, Iliad by Homer, pairing by Stephen Fry. Seven of ink. Bisclarvet. I don't know how to say that. Bisclarvet. Uh, gorgeous card. We've got the eight of ink, Leaves of Grass by Walt Whitman. Ooh, nine. Oh, hold, I'm going to show you this one. Nine of ink, The Most Dangerous Game by Richard Connell. But look at this art. Okay. So we've got the skeletons up there, all gilded. We've got the knife. This is a gorgeous card. Gorgeous card. Uh, ten of ink. A scarlet letter. Okay. Oh, yep, yeah, there's the A there. So he adds so much to all of these different cards. Ten of ink. Now it would be interesting if they had done just the gilding around the edge and then the A just gilded for emphasis. That would have been cool, but this is also a very cool card. Ten of ink. <laughs> Ten of ink. This, oh. Oh, yes, because that's the page of ink. The Magic Mountain. Uh, good card there. Uh, Knight of ink. And if that is not Tom Sawyer, Knight of ink. The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn. Yep. So beautiful. But look at that Queen of Ink. That seems like that's an um, uh, Pride and Prejudice Jane Austen book. Yep. That's what I was going to say. You got that Edwardian era dress, I think. Don't quote me on that. I am terrible with English history uh, and the um, clothes. But that screamed Pride and Prejudice to me. Look at those sunflowers. Look at that crown. Uh, War of the Worlds by H.G. Wells, I'm guessing. Yep, War of the Worlds. Very cool. Uh, Ace of Light. Carmilla. And coming up here, we have the Two of Light with Jane Austen. Coming up. Oh, yeah, Emma. Another fantastic card. Oh, look at that. We've got the Tin Man, Scarecrow, Lion Man. We've got the Wizard of Oz. Or maybe not the Wizard of Oz, but definitely an Oz book. Oh, the wonderful Wizard of Oz. Yep. Four of Light. We've got Bartleby by the Scrivener. Great card. Five of Light. And if that is not an instantly recognizable um, Great Gatsby. Great Gatsby, yep. The, the iconicness of this, I feel like this will resonate with people in ways that they need to be resonated with. Um, oh, the Adventures of Tom Sawyer. So there are several 
uh, twain books here. We got the Seven of Light, A Midsummer Night's Dream. You know, I think I'd love this. Uh, I'm not too well read in Shakespeare, um, but I do love um, uh, Much Ado About Nothing. Uh, Midsummer's Night Dream sounds like something my thing, but that is just gorgeous. Look at that, right? We've got Eight Paradise Lost. How invocative and beautiful that is. Nine, I don't know what that is off the top of my head. Anne of Green Gables. Ten, Mrs. Dalloway by Virginia Woolf. Got some nice accenting there. Page. Great Expectations by Charles Dickens. Uh, the duality of that card is amazing. Look at that. Then we've got uh, Tom Jones. We've got here Jane Eyre by Bronte. Look at that. The Burning House. The Destruction. The Bed. Oh, that is beautiful. The Night. Ooh, what is that? Oh, the Odyssey by Homer. The Iliad, the Odyssey. Sherlock Holmes is the Ace of Quills. Then we have Antagony by Sophocles. At least I think that's how you say it. That's how I've heard it. Three of Quills. We're going to have The Monkey's Paw. Very classic tale. Four of Quills. Obviously spoiled here. Walden by Henry David Thoreau. Five. Ooh, what do we have here? That seems like a Poe to me. Telltale Heart, maybe? Oh, Crime and Punishment by Dostoevsky. I haven't read that, but I can see how that would make sense. Six of Quills. Uh, okay, we Metamorphosis. Yep, Metamorphosis by Kafka. I also believe I'd like that one. I've never read it. But obviously, culturally, I know enough about it just from that. The Black Cat by Edgar Allan Poe. That is another fantastic art card. Oh, wait, hold on. So this is going to be the yellow wallpaper. But look, look at this. Look at how gorgeous. I got to get the right there, the right light. Look at the gilding. They spent so much time and effort on this gilding. And, oh, Nine of Quills is Macbeth. Oh, I know some people who will freak out if they're pulling a Macbeth during a reading, right? Okay, Ten of Quills. We have Heart of Darkness by Joseph Conrad. I feel like I'm going to need Google out um, when I read this for people. I need to go over all of the cliff notes, right? The Importance of Being Earnest by Oscar Wilde. Then we have Oedipus Rex by Sophocles. Uh, Rachel Pollock, what are you doing? What are you doing to the readers here? Someone gets the, the Oedipus Rex. They're not going to be happy. Okay, so Queen, we've got Beowulf. Oh, that is an interesting representation of Beowulf. Look at that. That's crazy. The King, we have Meditations by Marcus Aurelius. Okay. Ace of Parchments, The Secret Garden by Francis Hodgson Burnett. Another great card, but I would definitely have to look that up. Two of Parchment, Blood in the Mist. Um, very beautiful card. Then we've got the Three of Parchments, which seems like, yep, Three Musketeers. We've got that going very nicely. We've got the Four of Parchments, A Christmas Carol. This should have Muppets on it. I know why it doesn't, but the definitive Christmas Carol is the Muppets. Um, know me better, man. Is the first thing that comes to mind on that, right? And we've got the Five of Parchments here. Persuasion by Jane Austen. Um, you can tell the pair, the uh, the uh, headspace that we have for the literary tarot here, right? 
Les Miserables by Victor Hugo. That's going to be complicated. People are going to break out into song for this. Is that, that can't be. The Lost World. That makes more sense. Then we've got La Phantom de la Opera. Don't judge me. Don't judge me for that. After that, we have The Pillow Book. I, I'm not going to try. I don't have the cultural knowledge, unfortunately, to do that justice. Gentlemen prefer blondes. I like that. That's a more, a way more modern than most of what we have in here. I love that. Uh, we have Romeo and Juliet. Obviously has to be a card, right? Amazing. Then we've got The Night of Parchments, A Princess of Mars by Edgar Rice Burroughs. One of the progenitors, one of the first successful superhero stories. Queen of Parchment, The Snow Queen by Hans Christian Andersen. We've got The King of Parchment, Picture of Dorian Gray. And we should have one more card after this. Oh, no, because Ace was first. So that's all the cards we have. Absolutely gorgeous. Uh, any reading with this is going to be fraught and full of peril. Um, the cultural associations we have with this with ourselves, the personal imper imper interpretations we have are amazing. So now that we've gotten through that, we have this booster pack. So we got to vote on several cards um, because, you know, there were there's so many iconic um, things that could be associated with each card uh, that we got to, got to kind of vote on uh, what a, a second representation. So I'm going to do this Magic the Gathering style where I'm going to take it. I'm going to flip. So we have Death here. This is um, it's, not, it's um, the Red Death. This is one of the ones I voted for. The Red Death is beautiful and evocative, and I love that. Then... You know, I kind of slightly get the smell of formaldehyde on this. I mean, it's a good thing I'm putting it in sleeves, but that's something I'm going to mention. That is definitely third grade science class smell there. So we'll have to talk about that. Uh, then we have the star here. I believe this is Amaratsu. Um, do they tell us in here? I don't think they do. But that's okay. Might be in the Oracle Atlas, we'll see. Uh, then we have the moon here. Maybe Peter Cottontail. Maybe. Beautiful card. We have the magician here. I don't remember what this is. I will, I'm going to look this up real quick. Um, the lovers. Now this is... Um, I'm, I'm completely blanking. Greek mythology. Uh, and the lovers. So let's Google quick here. And yes, I am using Google as a verb. Screw your copyright, Google. Booster pack, yes, so. Oh, yes, of 
course, of course. Okay, so going back to the beginning here. This was the Red Death. I just double checked that, right? Okay, and then the star here is Amaratsu. I was right. How I can remember Amaratsu and not Greek mythology uh, is that I'm way more versed in. Uh, but Amaratsu is pretty iconic, so I get I get knowing her. Now the magician we have Anasazi, which is not this next card. Where is here? Yeah, we have Anasazi here, which with the spider webs makes complete sense, right? Uh, then we have the lovers, Achilles and Petricol Pet Petrocles. Um, and those are the only two that they met. We're missing two. Let's take a look. I'm sorry. Okay, yeah, we'll have to take a look. Um, so we'll keep an eye out for those. But these are all so amazing. So we're going to get these back in the box for now. Uh, we are going to open this. We're going to leaf through it. And I'm not going to go through everything, obviously, uh, but I will. So those cards, I'm going to give an A plus on all of those cards. Every single card there is absolutely done to justice. The art is amazing. The pairings, from what I can tell, are evocative and beautiful. This book itself, is there higher than an A plus? Look on the front here. On the front here, we've got the Monkey King here. We've got, uh, what do we got here? here? We've got the Monkey King. Down here, we've got um, the Jungle Book. We've got Alice in Wonderland. It's It's got everything. Wow, look at this. The quality on this. We've got how to do readings. And I am going to, I'm not getting the um, same smell here. Uh, all of this is a little sticky, which it doesn't seem to be too much of a problem. I don't know if it's humidity. Uh, I am seeing a little bit of printing errors here, uh, but based on what they communicated with us through the, that might not, that might be 15, I can't, 16, 17, I don't know, I think I am missing some stuff there. Yeah, there's definitely a, uh, some stickage. Yeah, definitely some stickage. Uh, definitely some printing errors here. I don't know if you can see it yet. Yeah, right there, you can see the, s the scrapes. Uh, absolutely beautiful. Definitely gives you some more information and everything. I feel like I have to go open each one of these because the way that they're sticking together if I don't, it could cause damage to the pages themselves. Uh, so I won't do that now. I'm going to go to the back of the book. And I am going to look to see if they give us information on... Uh, 
cards. Yes, here you go. Perfect. Oh, I'm so glad they did this. Okay. Major, major Arcana booster cards. Um, so, yeah, we've got the Magician with Anasazi. Hades and Persephone, obviously, the lovers. An additional lovers, uh, the Iliad by Homer. The Mask of the Red Death by Edgar Allan Poe. The Moon, the Rabbit of the Moon, Far Eastern Folklore. Amaratsu the Star. Okay, this is interesting. This is different paper. Um, it is different paper than what we have. It looks like this was done in a separate printing with separate um, standards with stuff. For, um, it still looks beautiful. It actually looks better than some of the stuff I get here. Like this is absolutely gorgeous here. There's no problems with the paper there. Um, but it's ba it's bowing. It's stuck together. Um, so I'm going to go through this and I'm going to fix it. Um, I am super happy with this. I honestly, as beautiful as this is, I think with the, what I'm seeing right now, this A plus for effort and design and meaning and beauty, but it has to be a C for construction. Um, I, I'm not sure um, the binding, uh, it looks pretty strong, but it looks like it was two different types of binding done, uh, or two different mediums bound together. Like this is glossy and flat, whereas this is um, more more matte and uh, has a texture to it. Um, a plus on everything that I could say about this, except for build quality, which would have to probably, I think, be a C. Um, I think a few bookmarks or uh, ta uh, tassels or whatever they call them would be nice. Um, I have a few different things that I think I'm going to do with this. Uh, overall, I'm super happy. I love the quality. I love how everything came... Oh, oh, no, we got some damage there. Oh, we've got actually quite a bit of damage there, don't we? Yeah. Yeah, this is definitely a C in terms of... Look at that. So I'm going to I'm going to contact him. I'm going to talk about the smell on the booster pack specifically. Um, that definitely had a formaldehyde smell. This definitely has some production damage. I don't blame the people who are making this. Uh, from what I heard, the company that they worked with in China during the shutdowns was absolutely terrible. And they should not ever work with them again. Um, in general, I'm incredibly happy with this. Um, so if anyone would ever like a reading, uh, or if anyone would like to see me do a reading, uh, let me know. Um, but if you have the chance to pick it up, I would suggest it. Um, lastly, with their um, anth uh, anthology they put out, this is an A in quality. Whatever company they used for this, uh, I don't know if they couldn't use it for this. They should have. Um, because this quality is top-notch A+, as far as I can tell. We have... Everything looks beautiful. No damage. It's all there. It's absolutely amazing. Um, these are not... The, these are beautiful. These go on a display to show off that you own them, right? Um, so I would suggest supporting these people. They did everything they could. Um, there is some problems uh, with production, uh, obviously. Uh, but I'm super happy uh, with what I did, with what I got, uh, except for the damage. Um, so thank you for spending time with me. Uh, if I get another uh, deck, I will do it here. Um, I know there's a few other decks I have. Maybe I'll go through all of them, tell you the pluses and negatives, especially once I get, start using these. Uh, this is going to go to my partner. 
uh, who absolutely loves the Greek myths, but specifically this is their OP, right? Their true OP uh, for all the millennials out there. Uh, thank you for spending time with me. I hope that going over this Kickstarter um, was at least a little bit interesting. Uh, follow me for Magic the Gathering stuff, for Magic stuff, for Tarot stuff, Magic with a CK, not just a C. Uh, um, uh, thanks for uh, having me, and I will 